We already know step one. There's five steps to successfully hitting a head and chest and chasing. Five key steps that you have to do right. If you do these five steps right, you, you can take down the stud. If you mess up one of these five steps, you're probably not going to take down the stud. All right. So the first, the first, uh, the first point, the first point here, the first step is head and chest cleanup. We already completed it. When I was up here, the uh, yesterday morning. I Inside tight collar tie. We're just going to stick with inside tight collar tie for now. Inside tight collar tie. I'm taking my angle knee drop. I'm stepping at an angle, coming up on my toe. My knee is hitting in front of his toe, and I'm wrapping elbow knee. Back of my elbow, wrap back of his knee, and I lock my hand. That's step one. Wrap elbow knee. Step number two. As he sprawls, I'm going to pull it down. He sprawls, I pull it down. Step number three. All the weight is on my left elbow, and my left hip is lower than my right hip. I'm in like a side plank. You guys know what a plank is? I'm in a side plank here. All the weight is on my left elbow, and my left hip is lower than my right hip. Right here's my position. That's step number three. Here's my position. This elbow is going to help block out the hip. Again, right hand is resting. All the weight's going to be on his right elbow, right hip lower and left. This is going to be right hand resting right there. What that's doing, face that way. What that elbow is doing, if I get this elbow down, it's going to lock this leg out to where he can't square up. This elbow is locking this leg out here. He cannot square up here. Now, if my lock is on the mat like this and my elbow's up, he can square that foot up. And he can square up to me. He can windshield wipe that foot. All this is doing, my elbow right here is basically holding this foot right here. So if he tries to square up, it's going to put pressure on his knee. All right? If my lock's up here, he can windshield wipe this foot and square up to me. It's crucial I get weight on that left elbow. All the way goes that left elbow. Left hip, lower and right hip. So this is step three. Left hip, lower and right hip. Left elbow on the mat. That's step three. Step number four. I start circling around behind him. My left knee is going to step over his leg. Step number four. I'm circling, I'm circling, I'm circling. My left knee steps over his leg. That further secures this foot. It further locks out this foot. My left knee here, there's no way he can square out. It's got his knee locked out here. I'm not putting pressure on his knee. I'm just not trying to pull this out. I'm just planning right here in the mat where it cannot go that way. That's going to further secure this leg. So my left knee goes up by my left elbow. That's step number four. Step number five, the final step, I unlock my hands and I stay under his butt and I go to the far knee. I don't like to chase that ankle. I like to chase the far knee and drive him down. Why I don't like to chase that ankle? If I chase the ankle, I'll catch this ankle like this. I'll start to drive and I can end up like this right here. It gets a little, little sketchy. He can start scrambling a little more. I like to chase that far knee, stay up higher, and block it down. Again, staying below his butt. So again, through the steps, inside tight collar tie is my setup. I'm taking my angle knee drop. Step number one, I wrap elbow deep. Step number one, I lock my hand. Step number two, he sprawls, I pull it down. Step number three, I go to my left elbow, and my left hip is lower than my right hip. Step number four, I circle around, I circle around, I step over the leg, my left knee is up close to my left elbow. Step number five, I unlock my hands, this hand stays above the knee, and I shift across to the 
Farley, I think that Farley uh, got him out there to take down. There's a lot of other little details in here that we gotta touch on. A lot of other little details. As I lock elbow deep, when he crawls, I'm going to curl my lock. I'm going to curl my lock, face him. Once I get to here, I'm gonna curl my lock up. I'm gonna curl my lock up. I'm not leaving this lock on the mat. I curled up his leg. What can happen? That his elbow's in on my leg, his lock is curled. This is the right position. He's on his right elbow, right hip, lower and left hip. He's got a good head inside from the chase angle. If this lock is on the mat, like this, I can do this. I can pop my leg over top of it, his lock slides down to my ankle, and I can park my butt right upon his shoulder here. It's going to be very hard to sprint, very hard for him to score. Also, when I jump it out, I can do the cheesy spin behind move, step back, take the leg out, do the spin behind move like that. So, I can't do any of that if his lock is curled. Notice this, the lock is curled it's up on my thigh here. It is not down on the mat like that. It's curled up on my thigh. That'll help keep him in here. A lot of guys even try to shove the lock down and jump it over, but then we just got to wrestle. So, when you're in on that single, curl that lock up. Get it off his leg. Um, uh, so the main, that's just a little detail there. The main things we see people mess up on, the main steps are the odd ones. Step one, step three, Step five, the main ones people mess up on. Usually people are pretty good with pulling in and down, and usually people are pretty good with circling behind and stepping that knee over. Let me show you what a lot of people do on step one. Step one is what? I wrap elbow deep. Step one is I wrap elbow deep. If I wrap elbow deep, when he goes to sprawl, he sprawls and I pull it in down. Notice how my elbow is right on the mat here. It's very easy for me to have the elbow on the mat. I'm already getting the angle. I've got that leg locked out already. If I lock, put my lock at the bend of his knee, my elbow's not there, if I lock at the bend of his knee like this, what's gonna happen when he sprawls, I'm gonna get extended. Watch this, my lock is at the, is at the bend of his knee, it's not like this, my lock is like this. He sprawls, I get extended because my lock is at the back of his knee. I'm in very bad position here. Very, Man, Manzona's gonna win this 10 times out of 10. My shoulder's down all the way to my right side, my, I'm very extended, I don't have his leg locked up. The difference between locking here and locking here is crucial. I cannot lock at the knee. My elbow wraps deep. When he sprawls, I go right to that elbow. That's the first one I see a lot of people mess up. They mess up on one, three, and five. Number three. Number three is what? All the weight on my elbow and my left hip lower than my right hip. All the weight on my elbow, left hip lower than right hip. That's step number three. I see a lot of people not putting weight on that elbow. Again, if you don't put weight on the elbow, Windshield wipe that foot and square it up. Also, very crucial, I have to have my hip lower. Manzona's a right-handed wrestler. He gets in, all the weight's on this elbow. Manzona's right-handed, his right hip is lower than his left hip. That's perfect. Right here, he's strong. If he goes to both knees, if he's on both knees, notice, his hips are flat here. His hips are flat. There's a few things I can do to beat him. I can do a three-quarter Nelson here. I can do that one. I can also bump into him and blast him to his hip and square up. His elbow's on the mat here. He's got my leg locked out, but since his hip isn't lower, I bump into him, I bump his hip to the mat, I can square up, and now he's fighting hips, now I'm right in there on the defense, mixed with Sean. All right, that's why it's crucial that hip is lower. I'm all the way in on my elbow, and for right hand wrestlers, your right hip is gonna be lower than your left hip. All right, right hand wrestlers. All the way on that right elbow, right hip lower than left hip. That's crucial. Also, I'm not hitting my, my, my trail leg this entire move. My trail leg is my right leg. I'm not hitting my trail leg knee this entire move, all right? I'm not going to both knees. And then the last one, that's step number three. A lot of people don't have trouble with uh, circling around for step number four. Step number five, you see a lot of youth wrestlers mess this one up. It's shifting across that far knee. Unlocking my hands, shifting across that far knee. Big step one. Three knee. So, step number five is this. I did all the work right. I've already done step number four. I've done step one through four, perfect. I'm right here. I unlock my hands. My right hand stays above the knee. From here, a lot of wrestlers mess this one up. All I have to do to get the takedown is shift across and catch this far knee and then drive him down. That's all I have to do. A lot of wrestlers do this. They unlock their hand. They come up around the waist. Manzona's gonna get, gonna get me in a wizard. He wizards me down. He kicks his leg out. Now I'm fighting a front headlock. I have to stay below that front. When I 
As I shift across, I stay below his butt, right here. I catch his knee, I drive him down, and I get to take him. So, those are very in detail. I know I just drew a lot of jumps. We're gonna deal with this for a while. Start out slow. We're gonna start cranking my hand a little bit. Start out slow. No need to rush drill. So, the five step. We're gonna go with inside tight collar tie. Doing that angle knee drop. Make sure I'm not doing the kneel show. I'm doing that angle knee drop. Come up on the toe, my knee's laying in front of his toe. I taught you guys that yesterday morning. Make sure we're doing that. Step one, I wrap elbow deep. Step two, I pull in and down. Step three, all the way to my left elbow, left hip lower than my right hip. Step four, I circle around, step my left knee over his leg, left knee and left elbow are close together. Step number five, I shift across the far knee, I take the far knee, and I stay below the butt, and I drive him down. Those are five key steps. This is what it looks like kind of full of speed. I'm gonna hit it, Mendona. Also, we got partners. If I hit this shot, Mendona stands straight up. I cannot do this technique. I want to hit a safety angle. Mendona's not going to be a good partner. He's going to stand up. This is what it's going to look like. I'm going to hit a head and side single. He's standing straight up. Head and side single. Chase the ankle's about to move. Right here, I'm going to drive up. I'm going to drive up to my feet every time. So, partner, you got to sprawl for him. All right? You got to sprawl. I'm not sprawling on him and smashing him. He's got to get the 